Well, it's great to be back in Southwest Florida, and uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Sheriff Carmine Marceno for hosting us here, and also for all the good work uh, that he's doing. You know, if you look at the, the crime here in Lee County, in terms of the trends, you compare it to a lot of places in our country, you're seeing major spikes in different places in our country. And I think one of the reasons is, is you know, we've got a lot of good folks like Carmine and his deputies and everyone here working. And also the state of Florida stands for law and order. We back our, our law enforcement personnel. Um, we also have um, a number of uh, legislators here uh, today. Um, Senator Pasadomo couldn't make it with us, but I want to acknowledge her when we're in Southwest Florida. I want to thank Senator Ray Rodriguez, Representatives Botana, Persons, Malika, and uh, Gia Lombardo for their hard work uh, in this most recent legislative session. We asked the legislature to do a lot, and they delivered for the people of Florida. I think we have a, a number of good things to talk about, and um, we're here to talk about one of those good things. Obviously, we were very concerned with public safety during this session. We passed uh, the strongest anti-rioting legislation in the country that really says a couple things. One is we're not going to let local governments defund law enforcement. Now, granted, in southwest Florida, that's probably not as much of a concern, uh, but that's something that could happen in some of these other enclaves in the state of Florida. Uh, by passing this bill and me signing it, that is not going to happen. If a local jurisdiction tries to do that, we're restoring the funding. Uh, we also have uh, strong penalties for people that are violent and that threaten others, harm others, or harm people's property, and basically sending a message to everyone that wears a uniform, the state of Florida stands with you. And I think that that was something that, that showed great leadership in the legislature. I was happy to sign it. But I also understood that this has been a year like no other. If you go back from the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, we have a lot of folks who had the luxury of maybe working from home or doing meetings on Zoom. Uh, the folks who are first responders, people that work for our sheriffs, for our police chiefs, uh, people who are EMTs and firefighters, you can't do the job in public safety on Zoom. You got to show up, you got to wear the uniform, you got to be out. And particularly in those early days and weeks where there was so much uncertainty about what was going to happen with COVID, uh, the men and women who wear the uniform were there for us day in and day out. And of course, we saw last summer uh, riots throughout the United States. Uh, you didn't see that up here like you did in Minneapolis or Wisconsin or some of those other places. But uh, law enforcement was under the gun. They were being attacked. Uh, they were being I think got maligned in, in many respects unfairly. And uh, I think it was important to, to recognize that they had uh, still put the uniform on, go out there. And yes, the state of Florida stood with them. Most of our local communities did. Uh, but that was a tough environment, I think, for a lot of people to have to work in. So all the things that we've seen uh, over the last year, I thought it was important uh, to do something to show our debt of, gratitude, a debt of gratitude. So while some over the last year have been talking about defunding law enforcement. Uh, we're proud to say we're funding law enforcement and then some with thousand dollar bonuses for all sworn law enforcement, all fire, all EMT personnel throughout the state of Florida. So that's about 175,000 folks. Uh, I asked the legislature to do it. They passed it. Uh, when I sign the budget, uh, we'll eventually get funds released and you're gonna see bonuses going out to our first responders uh, hopefully uh, as soon as we can get it done. Uh, but I think that this is something that is, that, that is warranted. Uh, it's a way for us to say thank you. And um, I'm glad that the legislature answered the call. So we're excited uh, to, to be here. We're excited to celebrate a really great achievement in, in terms of uh, uh, showing gratitude for our first responders and our law enforcement personnel. So I wanna let Sheriff uh, Marceno come up and, and say a few words uh, in this regard. Thanks, Governor. Okay. On behalf of my family at the Lee County Sheriff's Office, we want to thank Governor DeSantis for his unwavering support for Florida's law enforcement. All Floridians should be thankful for his commitment to maintaining law and order and keeping peace. I was honored to join our great governor recently as he signed the anti-rioting bill into law. And this law ensures that law enforcement can better protect the lives and property of every Floridian. We all know the difference between a peaceful protester and a rioter. We protect peaceful protesters. 
we arrest rioters. Zero tolerance means zero tolerance. Peaceful protesters can safely exercise their constitutional rights without the threat of having others hijack their voices. With our great governor, the anti-rioting bill addresses these issues head on and we can make certain our residents are safe with law and order. And now, we can't thank Governor DeSantis enough for proposing and securing $1,000 bonuses for first responders in recognition of the hardships endured by those who served over the past year. In a year like no other, with the pandemic, law enforcement continued to serve and protect, sometimes at the risk of their own families and well-being. Governor, we know that law enforcement can count on you. In fact, all first responders can count on you, and most of all, the people of Florida can count on you today and tomorrow. Thank you for being an outstanding leader. Governors from all around the country should follow your lead. You are truly the best. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. We have the chat. Bonus, well deserved. All right, you got it? All right, good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. And I also uh, want to thank the legislators here for just the general work. Uh, if, you, if we went back a year ago, people were predicting absolute catastrophe for Florida's budget and Florida's economy. I mean, look, we were, we're a service based economy, tourism. All that stuff uh, had ground to a halt, but uh, we really believe that uh, we needed to have people working, we needed to have businesses operating, we needed to have kids in school, and so over the last year, we've obviously pursued that. Uh, that's obviously a lot different than what you saw in many of these lockdown states, uh, but I think here we are a year, a year later, and we never took one penny out of our rainy day fund throughout this whole time, and in fact, our rainy day fund has doubled uh, since I became governor. You look at the amount of reserves that we have, uh, these are some of the largest reserves we've ever had uh, in the state's history. The amount of revenue that's coming in because of the economic strength in the state uh, is unlike a lot of the economists in Tallahassee have seen before. So for example, they're always revised the estimates of the revenue coming in. So they revised, I think the most recent one was the second week of April for April, May, and June. The last three months of the fiscal year were included in that. And we, that, you know, when they did the budget, like, you know, we're assuming those estimates. Well, just for April, the, the state took in $750 million above the estimate from just three weeks ago. So they can't even keep up with it in real time because you see so much strength. So that's going to be uh, May and June will likely have uh, over from what the estimate was. If it's even half of what April was, you know, that's a, between a billion and a billion and a half additional dollars that none of us even included in any type of budget. And so that will be added uh, to the reserves. And so I think what we've been able to do, and we're doing these bonuses, which are important. We're doing teacher bonuses, which we're, we're happy about that the legislature did that. We've done a lot on our infrastructure, roads, bridges, water resources, Everglades restoration. Obviously, we protected K through 12. Uh, we increased uh, what I had asked for last session and got in terms of increasing the uh, average minimum salary throughout Florida for teachers. So we've done all these different things, um, and yet we're probably better prepared uh, for some, whatever can happen down the road than we were even before COVID. Uh, and no one would have predicted that, and I think that it puts the state in, in, a, lot of great, in, in a great position. But none of that would have been possible you know, had we done lockdown policies, had we locked kids out of school, uh, had we done a lot of the things uh, that a lot of these other states have done. And so there's a reason why our unemployment rate is lower than the national average by a pretty significant amount, even though CDC has closed our, one of our main industries, our cruise line. We're suing over that. Uh, but just imagine if that was open, that's tens of thousands of jobs that are affiliated with that. So we, um, you know, we think we've got good momentum. We think the session worked out very well. Uh, these $1,000 bonuses, I think, have been well earned. Uh, when we announced it, it was uh, not something that people thought we necessarily could get done, but we got it done, and uh, we look forward to processing the budget, signing the dot, dot, uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's, 
getting these checks out uh, to our, our folks who, who've been on the front lines for us. So I'm happy to be here, and I'm really glad that uh, you know, the Lee County Sheriff's Department um, has been doing the great work that they've been doing. So thank you. Dave. Job search, yep. Yeah, so the, you know, we suspended, normally when you're getting unemployment, you know, the whole idea is that that's temporary and you, know, you need to be looking for work to be able uh, to get off unemployment, obviously work, because that's what we want everyone to do. Well, when COVID hit, the jobs were, I mean, things were just, I mean, it was a disaster. So we suspended those job search requirements, but I think it's pretty clear now we have an abundance of job openings. I mean, you go to talk to businesses, they wanna hire people, particularly in hospitality, restaurants, all these things. Uh, and so this is the last month where you're gonna have that in place. You are gonna have to resume uh, at the end of this month, uh, the job searching uh, as part of continuing uh, to receive benefits. And, and I think that that's absolutely appropriate uh, given the underlying strength of our economy. We absolutely could put more people to work we have the, the demand is there, uh, businesses want to hire more people, and I think that uh, we'll, we'll be able to go in that direction um, uh, very soon. So Governor, do you think the, the pull from so many people in this area and across the state who are holding mute now to this ID new thing to verify for the person, if you let us know, what is the state aware of existing problems with this ID new, what kind of complaints could the Better Business Bureau about the Senate receive about this effectively? Um, you, I'll have to refer you to Dane Eagle on that. Um, we, it, we still hear back from him. We call him every single day. Okay. He used to represent this area. Okay, I'll tell you what. Well, I will, uh, I will uh, call Dane after this. I'll let him know that you asked, and, and I will have him personally follow up with you guys. Yes, ma'am. I have not. I don't think that we've necessarily, um, I don't think we have a policy. I mean, I didn't know that that was necessarily uh, um, going on, um, you, you know, so uh, so I have to look at that. I mean, I did actually, you know, I did see some type of uh, headline about it. I did not uh, click through, so I don't want to speak out of turn without having uh, having seen um, seen the actual facts. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I mean, I'll, I'll have to review the policy and see. Like I said, it was it was kind of news to me. It's just because it's not been something that had ever come up before. Anyone else? Sure. Yes, ma'am. What do you say to um, activists out there that say that the CDC knowledge should act, might be a direct kind of a direct kind of not a slap in the face to people who are protesting right now? Well, it's not at all. First of all, we had a lot of protests in Florida that were peaceful, um, and no one said anything about it. But I also had a guy jump the fence in the governor's mansion. We saw some places in Tampa and Orlando where people started to get violent. Now that was that was uh, uh, reeled in pretty quickly. I called out the National Guard. We were very serious. Obviously, I had people like Carmine who were who were ready to go for it. Uh, but you know, I think if you look around the country, what happens is, like in Portland, these these people riot every night. They they go, they get their mug shot, and then they get put right back on the street to do it again. That's what we don't want. What we want to say is, you know, you know the difference between going out and doing First Amendment stuff, which obviously we all support. It's, it's, it's part of being American. The minute you harm somebody else or you harm somebody's property or you do those types of things, the only way we're going to put a stop to it is to have very swift penalties for it. And so I remember, I mean, seeing some of the police, how they were treated was horribly. People throw, stuff, throw bricks at them, do all. I mean, you have you seen in some of these cities, Whenever there's a little bit of unrest, literally there'll be a U-Haul that just gets left there, and there's all this stuff in the back of it for these people to do all this stuff. And so we don't want that coming to Florida. Um, there's a lot of places around this country that have not stood by law enforcement, and the tragedy of it is uh, you're seeing crime spike in certain parts of our country like we haven't seen in decades. And the people that are going to be most affected by that are the most vulnerable members of our society. And in fact, when these guys are getting called out, they're usually getting called out to help victims who can't defend for themselves. And so they need people to, who wear the uniform to be able to go out and to be able to protect them and to be able to provide a measure of justice when they're being harmed. And what I've seen throughout the country is uh, people stepping back from this, not supporting law enforcement, being very lax, allowing more and more of this to happen. And it's caused increases in crime 
and that is going to have devastating consequences. I mean, you know, it's so good to have a good economy, you know, schools, all these great things that we always fight for. All of that collapses if you don't have public order and public safety. And so one of the reasons we're here today with the bonuses is because we know just how important that is. And so I think that uh, what we did uh, plants our flag in the ground. It tells people, hey, if you're in Portland, you think you can come down to Florida and do this, stay out of our state. Uh, we, don't, we don't want you coming down here and causing problems. And if anyone does cause these problems, if you try to burn something down, you try to harm uh, anybody, but particularly a police officer uh, during one of these, um, during one of these uh, violent assemblies, uh, there will be consequences. They will be swift and they will be severe and they will be uh, such that people who see that happening will know that's not something that we want to do going forward. Thanks everybody. We'll see you soon.